vertical farming startups require significant capital as is well known. It costs money to obtain proper premises, install plants, growing systems like trolleys, irrigation, light fixtures, ventilation and more. Vertical farming aficionados will tell you that indoor farming is the ultimate solution to food shortages, environmental difficulties and all of your financial problems. They may not be wrong but vertical farming is hardly a solution to instant massive food supply. Vertical farming is the process of growing crops in vertically stacked layers on walls or specifically built buildings. This strategy produces larger agricultural yields while leaving a lower impact than traditional farming methods. That is, impact on our environment, our health according to the proponents of vertical farming. Climate change may make producing food indoors a necessity. Despite receiving more than a billion dollars in a venture capital investment, most companies in the industry appear to be withering or unable to profit from the lettuce. But why is vertical farming failing so soon? In this episode, we attempt to examine several factors, so please stay tuned. Hello and thanks for stopping by. To ensure you don't miss out of any of our new videos, like, subscribe and turn on the bell notification option. Sharing is greatly appreciated and we welcome your participation and thoughts in the comment section below. Why not entirely reduce food mice by growing food directly next to restaurants, cafeterias and the supermarkets? Why not produce crops in closed systems where water can be recycled and paste can be managed without the need of chemicals? It sounds wonderful, doesn't it? Nonetheless, there are numerous problems. We are seeing a new verge in agriculture, so-called vertical farming, that grows food indoors using energy-intensive artificial light support systems. Many potential vertical farmers may be unable to enter because too high initial expenses, which will be difficult to recover. Vertical farms frequently have greater running costs because of requirements like artificial lighting, heating, cooling, ventilation and more. Vertical farming costs a significant amount of energy since optimal plant growth necessitate the use of numerous growing lamps. However, researchers are now developing new technology to reduce the energy usage of indoor farming. Pest and disease management poses a huge barrier for urban farming. Crops in urban areas are more vulnerable to pest infestation and the disease outbreaks because they are so close together. Traditional pest management measures such as chemical pesticides may be inappropriate for urban farming due to their possible detrimental impact on the environment and human health. So, vertical farming firms hope to apply integrated pest management tactics which include the use of biological controls and cultural practices to help minimize dependency on chemical pesticides, which remain a big concern, especially as we are dealing with environmental crisis. Urban farming necessitates specific knowledge and skills in horticulture, technology and business management. However, Recruiting people with the requisite skills and expertise can be difficult for agri-tech firms. So, why is vertical farming failing or delaying to come to fruition? Let's start with this example. David Rosenberg, the founder of Aero Farms, had developed the world's largest vertical farm in downtown New York, where lush greens were grown with 99% less land and 95% less water than typical farms. It did not apply any insecticide. It prevented any runoff from escaping into the environment. And it was de-risking the riskiest of human industries by using artificial intelligence, robotic big data analytics, high-tech automation and club vibe magnetar. 
Let lightning to provide optimal growing conditions 24 hours a day and 365 days a year. With that being said, all of this is a reflection of the world's pressing need to produce more food with less environmental damage in a period of increasing severe droughts, hurricanes and heat waves. Despite all of these excellent promises, Aero Farms declared bankruptcy in early of June last year, citing significant industry and capital market headwinds, and the Rosenberg was forced to stand down as CEO. Aero Farms stated in its bankruptcy filing that the SPAC transaction failed due to challenging capital market conditions and that the company subsequently closed two rounds of Series 3A preferred equity financing that raised approximately $21 million but were insufficient to meet its capital requirements. In another bid, Calera, an Orlando-based vertical farming startup, filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy on April 4 in the U.S. Bankruptcy Court for the Southern District of Texas. Calera was forced to continue operating its business as debtor in possession under the Bankruptcy Court's jurisdiction and in accordance with the Bankruptcy Code. Later, Calera PLC sold its wholly owned subsidiary, Vindara Inc., to Santun Capital Solutions Master Fund VLP, making a significant step forward in its restructuring strategy. Santun Capital Board Vindara, a specialist in indoor farming seed development, through a stock purchase agreement in which all of Vindara's common shares were sold for approximately $3.99 million. This payment comprises the forgiveness of a $3.3 million debt owed by Calera to Santun Capital as stipulated in the deal. The debt forgiveness is a result of a financing agreement between Calera and the Farm Credit of Central Florida, which Vindera guaranteed. The deal reflects Calera's continuous effort to reorganize its business following its bankruptcy case. After realizing that controlled environmental agriculture and traditional agriculture can benefit from one another, Upward Farms has shot at its Brooklyn headquarters farm and is abandoning the vertical farming business to focus on microbiome. The company's decision to use aquaponics as a production technique demonstrates its commitment to capturing rather than imitating the nuance and the harmony of natural ecosystems. These scientists at Upward Farms understood that enhancing the soil's microbiome might unlock new levels of plant fertility and growth while also addressing a variety of other global concerns. Furthermore, they consider microbiome science to be a fascinating topic that has only recently begun to be investigated. In a statement, the company's founders expressed regret and satisfaction in their work over the last 10 years, which they see as the most significant of their lives. Feed season in Pittsburgh, future crops in the Netherlands and the Glow Farms have all gone bankrupt or shut down. Another industry leader, Berlin-based InFarm, had previously announced the laying off of 500 employees, accounting for more than half of its personnel. Farmers who need to raise 50% more food by 2050, while using much less land and water and producing considerably less carbon. I get it, but is vertical farming the answer? Outdoor agriculture has been around for as long as you can remember, and it is remarkable that no one has developed a better method of growing crops. Vertical farming does appear to have its place. The challenge would be determining how to make any of the above work at a fair cost on a global scale. And that concludes today's video. It is actually a great deal sticking around onto this point. Do let us know what you think about today's discussion in the comment section below. And you can support this channel by liking this video, subscribe and activate the bell notification feature so you always know when we put out new content. And remember, sharing is caring. Take care and see you in the next video.